Have you been redoing the same steps every time you start a new video project? Like, every single time? <sighs> what a waste of time. I mean, even though you're just starting out on the video, it just, it's an extra step that you probably don't need to take. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Of course I am. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set your project presets as presets ahead of time in DaVinci Resolve. This is part of my time-saving hacks for video editing series. I'm here to help you get productive, so let's get into this. Before we do, consider subscribing if you're not already because I help out creative entrepreneurs. You know, so if we're on the same page here, hit that subscribe button. Now, let's get into this. Now, most of the time, you're probably not going to have to affect these settings. However, if you're like me and you switch between different projects all the time where one's 4K, the other isn't, or even if there are specific settings that you have that you wanna set, so that way it takes effect every single time, then you're gonna wanna do this and you're only gonna wanna do it once, so. Yeah, first thing you're gonna do, you're either gonna push shift nine or you're gonna click on this cog right here. And here you have your timeline settings. Now, the cool thing about the timeline settings is that even if you have 4K footage, you can still keep an HD timeline and it's not gonna affect the quality. When you render it out, it's gonna pop up with a little message, but beyond that, like, you can keep it here and save your system resources because if you increase this to 4K, then you know, your computer does have the huge potential to drag if it's not in like super beast mode. You can set up your timeline for IGTV and actually just reverse these numbers to do 1080 by 1920. And that'll give you a vertical video that you can work with that you can then post to IGTV. So you can create a preset for that too, which is pretty awesome. Going down here, you can actually change your cache settings if you want to. I just keep mine at the default, however, one thing here where it says enable background caching after five seconds, I like to change this to three because what this is is when your computer is idle for five seconds, that's when it starts the background caching. So if you are using caching, which I don't know why you wouldn't be using caching, at that point what's gonna happen is it's only gonna wait three seconds instead of five seconds. I realize it's a two second difference, it's not a lot of time, but still. This is also a space where you can change your cache and gallery stills location. Unless you're messing with your settings, you probably don't need to change this. Image scaling, everything here can actually just stay the same, so you're good with that. Going to general options, everything here, again, is going to stay pretty much the same. Now, I am on Windows, so a couple of settings are going to be different between the two, but for the most part, I'm just focused on the regulars here. Camera Raw, this one's if you're using a specific camera, so Ari Alexa, which is like, a super expensive camera. If you're using raw footage or anything, that's where you're gonna set these settings. Capture and playback. This has to do with any capture settings. So if you're recording voiceovers or anything into DaVinci Resolve itself, then some of these settings might be applicable to, to you. Then you have your subtitle settings. These don't need to change. And then Fairlight. Fairlight, I would actually change. So on here, where it says target loudness level, by default, it's a negative 23 luffs, I believe, and YouTube has a maximum of negative 14. So if you go above that negative 14, what's gonna end up happening is YouTube is going to normalize your audio and it's not gonna sound as good. They're gonna use their own compression algorithm and your audio is gonna sound like crap, really. So I set this at negative 14 so I know exactly where my peak is going. Beyond that, if you have all of your settings set, next thing you're gonna do is go up to presets, set a new preset. So we're gonna hit save as, we'll just name it default video. Click OK. Now there's two things that you can do at this point. First thing is you can just leave it as is. So every time that you open DaVinci Resolve and you're working on a particular project, for example, IGTV, if you wanna switch the resolution back to the 1080 by 1920 versus the 1920 by 1080, then all you would have to do is click on this, click load, and it would load it up for each individual project. However, if you're not doing that and you're going to be using the same profile all of the time, then all you have to do is right click on default video or whatever you named your preset, click set as user default config and it's going to load it every single time. So watch this, I'm going to go home. So we'll do a new project, hit test. And now when we load this up, if we go to the cog, because I set it as default, here it is at three seconds. Now, if I wanna go back to the normal one, then all I have to do is click on any one of these, hit load, and it'll load the default. So there you go. 
DaVinci Resolve and Blackmagic Design, they're really good about just setting the settings that are gonna work for most people. Now, obviously, if you wanna tweak it a little bit, you know how to do it, you know how to save it, so that way you don't have to do it every single time. Maybe you're switching between 4K and 1080p, or maybe you're doing Instagram. So did you know about this already? Is this something that you currently use? Let me know down in the comments below. Smash that like button if you got value out of this, of course, and if you did, share this with a friend. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you catch all my future videos and ring the bell so that way you get notified when those videos come out. And until next time, I'll catch you later.